We'll move the back slopes. And I know it's kind of tiny, so I'm going to actually ride them again, and I'll spread them out a little bit more, but not be able to. There's going to be a lot of other stuff going on the board as well. So I'm going to go side to side right here. It's not going to be on camera, but you have them in the announcements. They were emailed. Talked about them since the first week. If you don't know your rules of exponents, you're not going to do well in chapter four. You have to know them. There's no getting around it. Can't stress that anymore. Not just know them, you got to know how to use them. Okay. So either you start making sure you can apply them, or if you can't, then you need to start working on either going tutoring, uh, work in a study group, or come to office hours, but don't put it off. Rule number one, when you multiply, you add the exponents. The bases have to be the same. A to the M times A to the N is A to the M plus N. You add the exponents. Number two, when you have a power to a power, you multiply the exponents. A to the M raised to the N power you multiply the exponents, a to the m times n. Number three, if you have a product to a power, so a times b, a product to the power of m, then each factor is raised to that power, a to the m, b to the m. If you have a fraction to a power, like we have over there, number four, a fraction to the one half, a over b, to the m power, then the numerator and the denominator both get raised to the m power, a to the m over b to the m. Number five, when we divide, we subtract the exponents. The bases have to be the same, a to the m over a to the n. We subtract the exponents, that's a to the m minus n. Number six, the power of one is just itself, a. A to the first is just A, which means if you just see A, there's a 1 here, which is why when you have X times X, that is X to the second power, not because you have two X's, because this is X to the first times X to the first, which when you multiply, you add the exponents. This is X to the 1 plus 1. That's why it's X to the second. Yeah, we're multiplying a couple of x's together, so yeah, x to the second. But when you have x to the second times x, well, there's a 1 there, so that's x to the 2 plus 1, that's why we have x to the third. There's a 1 there, we just don't write it. x to the first is just x. Okay. Number 7. Anything to the zero power is always one. Everybody yesterday, Tuesday, they have the same disease everybody else does. They say zero. Okay, everything to the zero is always one except zero. A to the zero is equal to one, provided A does not equal zero and it won't for us. A to the zero, or zero to the zero is indeterminate. That's a calculus low question. And then number eight, move this a little here. Number eight, negative powers. Negative power means reciprocal. You flip it, then you do the power. So we're not going to actually do five to the negative two. We have to flip it first. A negative exponent, a to the negative m, you're going to rewrite it as one over a to the positive m. Then you do the exponent if you can simplify it. Or if you start with a negative exponent in the denominator, one over a to the negative m down below, then you flip it up. A negative exponent means reciprocal. You flip it. Then you can work through uh, power. You can do the exponent. 
number nine. When you have fractions as your exponent. So this number nine is if the numerator is a one. So a to the one over n. One half, one third, one fourth, one fifth, anything with a one in the numerator. This is just the nth root of a. So the denominator is always going to tell us what root we're taking, what kind of jail it is. The base is the radicant. It's what's inside the radical. We're going to take that denominator, that nth root of whatever a is. So 121 to the one half power, you're going to convert that to square root 121. The square root of 121 is 11. Okay, but you need to be able to look at this in both directions. 121 to the one half is the same as square root 121, or you might have to change square root of 121 into 121 and write it as a exponent. You have to work these in both directions now, because sometimes we're going to want this written like this. Well, and sometimes we're going to want to do it well, this way. It depends on the question. That's what it always is going to depend upon. What question are we trying to answer? Because now we're going into logarithms. Logarithms are going to work better if we have exponents, not with radicals. Then number 10. Well, we wouldn't be, you know, we, we'd be very limited if we only did 1 over 2, 1 over 3, 1 over what about two over three? What about five over seven? What about other kinds of fractions? So a to the m over n. So it's not just a one over n, it's n number over n. n is still the root. The denominator is always going to be the index, what root you're taking. So it's the nth root. The numerator, the m, is a power. It's a to the m inside the radical. So you would raise the base, you would raise it to that power, and then take the nth root of it. Or you can take the nth root because the denominator is always the radical. A is the base. It's always the radical. It goes inside. You can take the nth root of the A first, and then raise it to the m power afterwards. n is still a power. n is what you're going to raise it to. n is the root. That's what you're going to take the radical of. You either take the radical first and then raise it to the power, or you raise it to the power, then take the radical. It depends which one's going to be easier. That's why I gave you these examples. There we go. Five times itself, negative two times, five to the negative two. I don't think so. Yeah. The next one means we're going to do the reciprocal first. So we rewrite this as 1 over 5 to the positive thing. Okay, rewrite it. And that is 1 over 5 to the second is 25. Good question. Be real careful about how you write it. I see a lot of 5 to the seconds equaling 10. Because when we say this, I hear that's not five to the second, it's not five squared. I hear five two. I hear the language being said as five two. And it's not five two, it's five to the power of two, five to the second power, five squared. So you know you're going five times five, not five times two. There's something more than just five two. Okay, so you got to make sure you have it as an exponent. Make sure you write it 
as an exponent. When you write these things on this test, if you do that, I don't know if you're writing five times two, 52, or five to the second. So I'm not going to guess. I'm just going to say too big, and I'll probably take off a point. Because it's not, that's not five to the second. You have control over what you write. And especially if I'm telling you right now, and I'll tell you guys again at 10, and I'll probably tell you, again, you guys again next week, probably tell you again over and over and over. So it's like, well, if you don't do it, it's on you, not me. Yeah. It's like those signs they put on the road saying, uh, something limit is blank, and if you go over that, you get a ticket. But I didn't know. What do you mean? I didn't know we could do that. But the signs have been there your entire life. You took, it, you took a test and said you couldn't. It was like, but I didn't know. Yeah. Because you, you, you. Okay. it means something different. And it's those little tiny details that make big mistakes. So, And that's it. That's all you do. 36 times is all I have time. You know what I'm going to see? I'm going to see 18s. Oh, yeah, 18. Yeah, 36 times a half is an 18, but we're not two times a half. Two the half. Or two the half. So the only way to do it is you're going to convert it to a rabbit. 36 to the one half power. A one half is a square root because the denominator is a two. So this is just square root of 36. We don't put a two on a square root. You never have, so why start that? Square roots don't put a two in there. Now, if you do put a two in there, here's where you gotta be real careful. If you get it, it goes in here. That's where the index is. I really recommend you don't. You don't with a two. With all the other ones, you have to because those are different jet. But it's here. If you write it messy and you go like that, that's two times square root two or square root whatever. If it's not inside a little notch, it's something completely different. Mathematics is all about translating what you're working with into symbols, notations. And if your translation into the symbols and notations isn't correct, you're going to do something different with it. Or it means something absolutely different. And mathematics, again, the greatest details. If you don't, you're not careful with the details. If your accountant is not careful with the details. If your surgeon is not careful with the details. If the guy setting up your cable is not careful with the details. That's when things you know, don't work out. But if your mechanic is not careful with the details, pull off the wrong wrench. Okay? It's metric. You just strip, you know, you strip the whole thing. You know that we lost a probe that went to Mars? This is probably about 20 years ago, 25 years ago. United States built it with in conjunction with the uh, European Space Agency, the ESA, NASA and ESA. Well, Americans, we, we do things with miles of feet and, and yards and those kinds of measurements. We don't know, we don't do that metric stuff. They did everything metric. Nobody converted the unit. So when I got there and it was trying to convert to land, they lost all contact with it. And we did they just tear shit blew up on the way in and didn't they crashed because the units didn't connect. That's good thing. And those are high level scientists. Yeah. Details matter. So let's square 36. So 36 to the one half. Is just six. Okay. Doesn't look like it wouldn't be 36 and a half is a six. Yeah. And here's why. 
Isn't six squared 36? Yes or no? Yeah. So right here, if I cha change this 36 right here, this one, into six squared, and then I raise it to that one half power, like that, 36 is this six squared to the one half. Now I'm doing rule number two, power to a power, I'm supposed to multiply the exponents. So this is six to the two times one half. Two times one half is two over two. Two over two is six to the first. Six to the first is just six. So this is the entire problem done with respect to the exponents. So we really wouldn't even need to, you know, rule number nine and number 10. We wouldn't need to convert it into radicals and understand get them out of jail or anything. We could do it all with exponents, but you can't do all those conversions. They don't want to. Because I can understand what square 36 is. Convert it, take square root. But you have to make sure you understand to convert it first. What's 20 squared? 400. You can punch that up. But if I ask you what's 50 squared, just right to here, what is 50 squared? 2,500. Why? 20 squared. What's 2 squared? Root of the second is four. And then this is two times 10 or 20, right? Right? So two squared times 10 squared. Four times 10 squared is 100. 400. 50. Squared is just five times ten squared. So five squared times ten squared, twenty-five times a hundred. Okay, twenty-five hundred. Square the five, and then you got two zeros. That's why on the table of the powers, I left yeah, 10 all the way to the 10th, and I left 20 all the way. Because you're just gonna raise like 20 to the 20 to the to the fourth. Well, that's two times 10 to the fourth. So that's two to the fourth times 10 to the fourth. This is 16. And this is a one with four zero. So that's 16 times 10,000, which is 160,000. Or six, a 16 with four zeros. Two to the fourth and then four zeros. Two to the fourth is 16 and then four zeros. Because it's powers of 10. Powers of 10 are really nice. Just how many zeros do you want? And what's the power? 10 to the 10th, one with 10 zeros. So 64 over 49 to the one half. So you can do this a couple of different ways. Let's just let's just do it one way. The whole thing to the half means square root. So it's one big square root of 64 over 49, which we know is this rule is the nth root of a fraction is just the nth root of the numerator over the nth root of the denominator. 
So this is just the square root of 64, square root of 49, 8 over 7. You could also go say 24 to the half over 49 to the half, which is square root of 64 over square root of 49, which is 8 over 7. And I don't have to make, you know, make it up out of thin air how to get there. The rules tell me. It's kind of like, I don't have to think for myself to get there. I just have to know what the rules are to get there. If I follow the rules, I'll get to the right answer. But if I'm trying to make it up as I go along, if I don't know the rule, then I'm trying to figure it out. And come up with some brand new way. So, number five, a two-thirds power. So a two-thirds power is rule 10. You have an M over an N, not just a one over an N, but an M over N. So A to the M over N could either be the nth root, of A and you raise it to the power first, or you take the nth root, it's always going to be the nth root because that's a denominator. You take the nth root of A and then you raise it to the power afterwards. So the denominator is a three. So it's either the cube root of the 125 and the numerator is two. So I would raise it to the second before I do the cube root, or I take the cube root of 125, and I raise it to the second after I take the cube root. And how will you know? Well, you do a few and you start to see which one works best. Now watch. This way would be the cube root. You have to go 125 times 125. So that's my brain was not never works in the morning. It doesn't work in the evening, it doesn't work in the afternoon. I need to find the answer for something. 125 times 125 is 15,625. <laughs> so this right here is 15,625. Okay. Then, Hubert Jail, how many of a kind do we need? One, yeah. Hubert. Oh, we need three of to break out J. So now you got to start breaking this apart. Well, let's see. Give me two numbers to make fifteen thousand six hundred twenty-five. How about this? It ends at a twenty-five, doesn't it? So twenty-five will go into a twenty-five times five. Six hundred twenty-five. So this is five times five. Now, hey, six hundred twenty-five is hopefully you know and remember it's on the chart. It's twenty-five squared. Twenty-five times twenty. So this is twenty-five times twenty-five, and then you have a five times a five, a five times a five, and a five times a five. So we need groups of threes. So here's three fives. 
one is going to make it out. Here's another group of three bodies, and one is going to make it out. So a couple of bodies make it out of the jail, and they meet up outside, both them back together. So five times five is 25. So 125 to the two-thirds, 25. When you said this, give me two numbers that make the 15,625. I didn't give you a lot of time to think about it, but wouldn't it be just 125 times 125? Give me two numbers that make 15,625. Well, didn't I just come from 125 times 125? And if you know your powers, that again, I'm going to bring that up. 125 is 5 to the third. It's one of those that you should know. 5 to the third is 125. You should know these powers of 3. 1 to the third is 1. You need to know 2 to the third. Like you know 2 times 2 is 4. 2 to the third is 8. 3 to the third is 27. 4 to the third is equal to 64. These are going to happen a lot in chapter 4. 5 to the third is 125. 6 to the third is equal to 216. This is pretty much as far as you would need to go. But recognizing those numbers are going to be very beneficial. 6 to the third is, a, is on my wish list. But definitely through five to the third. Okay, you're going to see it a lot. So here's a pair of uh, three. Uh, here are three five. One makes it up. Here's another set of three five. Another five survives. We get one five. So my point is this. If I Decide to multiply this out first, square it, and then take the cube root. Why should I actually multiply the number and make it huge and then just have to break it down? Why actually multiply 125 times 125 and then make this huge number and then try to factor apart when I actually have 125 times 125 and just go from there? There's my tree. And use that on my, as my starting point. And break those apart. But again, I'm going to my wish list. Recognize I got the cube root of 125 here. He just said I need to recognize that the cube root of oh, 5 to the third is 125. So the 5 to the 3rd is always 125. Then the cube root of 125 is always going to be this with 5. Square. You wouldn't, even, you wouldn't need to show me jail because that would be like saying, show me the square root of 64 is 8. And you have to show me 8 times 8. 7 times 7. You don't have to do that. If that is 7, that is 8. Those are perfect squares. 125 is a perfect cube. So the cube root of 125 is straight to 5. And then 5 squared, 25. It'll just depend on the question. Speaking of that, is there any question about that? So three ways, there are three ways to do it. Both, all three will get you to the right answer. You just got to practice and make sure you can do one of them to get, to get to the right answer. One of them is the quickest. Doesn't mean it's the best for you. Okay? If you understand all three, then you got to 
You can now pick and choose, but you want to make sure you at least know one that you will practice all the time so you will be able to do it in about two weeks. Because we're very close. Number six. So we start with nine to the negative three over two. Remember, we would never try to do a negative exponent. We would flip it first. So the first thing I'm going to do is get what? One over nine to the positive three over two. You don't flip the three over two. You're only flipping the fraction. You're only flipping this nine to the denominator. This exponent becomes a positive. You don't flip the three over two. So now with the denominator, we're working with one over the denominator is a two. That means it's a square root. So it's the square root. The base is a nine. So inside the square root is that nine. And you have to make a choice. The numerator is a three. So I either raise nine to the third and then take the square root of it. Or I can take the square root of nine and then raise it to the third power. So should I make... So I raise nine to the third, make it a huge number, and then take the square root of it? Or should I take the square root of nine and then raise it to the third? Take the square root of nine first, because square root of nine is a, just a three. Nine's a perfect square, so it would be easier to just take the square root of nine, and then I'll raise that to the third power. So this is equal to 1 over square root of 9 is 3. Now to that third power. And that's equal to 1 over 27. It's 1 over 27. When you start when you see this part of the problem and you see nine to a negative exponent, in your mind, you have to right away think, okay, negative exponent, it's got to be in the denominator. It's going to be one over something. So my answer needs to look like one over something. Okay? It's not going to be something in the numerator. It's going to flip. Versus number seven, where I start with one over and I have a thousand, and that is being raised to the negative two thirds. So it's a negative exponent, but it's in the denominator. So if it's starting in the denominator, it's going to the above. So now I'm going to have 1,000 to the positive two thirds. Now when it flips up, it's over one. But anything over one is just itself. You don't have to put a one in the denominator. So now we convert it to a radical. The denominator is a three, so a three means it's the cube root. The base is the thousand, so that's a radicand on the inside. And then the numerator is a two, so again, ask yourself, should I square this first and make it huge, or should I square it second? And the question is, 
cube root of a thousand. Does that simplify nicely? Yeah. It's got three zeros. So that means it's just 10 to the third. Okay. So I'm going to take the cube root first and then look at this. This is 100 times 10. And then this would be a 10 times 10. And then there's another 10. It's 10 to the third power. Three zeros, 10 to the third. So the cube root, I would need one of those tens to survive. And then I'm still going to raise it to the second and 10 to the second to the hundred. more up here. One hundred to the three over two. Wait, wait, wait. Let's enter that. Let's do the commission. So let's do the twenty five. No, I don't. Let's just do something like five to the three over two. Five to the three over two. So let's convert. What's the radical? What are we going to look like if we convert it into a radical? What kind of root? So square root, what's the base? Five. So it's the square root of five, and I can either raise it to the third afterwards or raise it to the third before. Well, if I raise it to the third afterwards, that means I have to figure out what the square root of five is. It's not a perfect square. So that's what makes it different. It's not a perfect square like the other ones have been. This was a nice, perfect cube that I could just square. Made it simple. Square root of five is square root of five. So I would just have to multiply square root of five times itself three times. Square root of five times square root of five times square root of five. Because again, we're looking for the exact value. Okay, so this is square root 5 times square root 5, which is just 5, and then times square root 5. That's as far as we can go. Because I can't multiply that 5 on the outside with the 5 on the inside. But when I multiply 2 square root 5s, this is the square root of 25, which is why I get a 5 out here. Or it's the square root of five, there's two of them, squared. So it undoes the square root. And I got a five right there. Okay. If I do the rewrite this way and do the square root and the five to the third on the inside, well, then I can factor it out. 5 to the third would be 5 times 5 times 5, right? To break out a square root jail, we need two of a kind. There's a pair of fives. So one five survives. There's a leftover five that goes back in square root jail. Five square five. Well, that was quicker. So it does depend upon what you're working with. But you know what? Three over two. That's an improper fraction. What is three over two as a mixed number? Three 
which means how many times can two go into three e? One time. What's the remaining? A half. So one and one half. That means one five is going to escape, and there's a remainder. There's one five left in the square root j. One over two, one five left in that square root j, one and one half. If it was five to the nine over two, how many times does two go into nine? This is four and a half, right? Nine over two is four and a half. Four and one over two. So this would be five to the four with a square root of five left behind, with one left behind. Five to the fourth is 625, square root five. What do you have in proper fractions? Right? Because think about this. What if I ask you something simple besides nine over two? What about five to the eight over two? That's just five to the what? Five to the fourth, and five to the fourth is 625. So five to the nine over two would be bigger than eight over two. And so 625 times another square root five. So that improper fraction, how many times does it go in evenly? That's how many, that's the power of how many that break out. The remainder is the power of what's left in that radical. So if I had, well, let's go with uh, 15 to the four thirds. Three goes into four, how many times? Four over three. Four over three is one and one third. So one, one fifteen escapes. It's a cube root. So I have the cube root of a 15 left behind. Otherwise, I'm doing this. The cube root of 15 to the four or the cube root of 15 and then raise that to the fourth. Well, this doesn't simplify. So I'd have to raise it to the fourth and I have nothing to simplify. So I would probably do this and look what happened. I have 15 four times. So, hey, there's 315, one escapes. There's a 15 left over. I need three of a kind. That's just going to be three. Nothing's going to break out. So that 15 goes back in cube root jail. Same thing. So four thirds is one and one third. One fifteen escapes, and there's one left behind. So that's a that's another way to interpret it. But you got to understand these other things too to really kind of take that next leap. Three point three. Is there anything you want to see? Because I'm not going to go over any questions from three point three. We did examples of that on Monday, but for the time we have left, is there anything from three point three that you want to see? No. Then what we're going to do is we'll come back at 10. At 10, we're going to finish up 4.1. We just have to do the last little part of it and plug it over to the calculator. But then 4.1. 4 4.2 is writing the logarithm. Exponent logarithms and the inversions. So a lot of calculators. Done. So come on back at 10.